In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we are celebrating November 30th, which is the feast day of St. Andrew. As the apostle, and initially a fisherman, but one of the 12 apostles called by Jesus. As we gather in God's presence, let us be mindful of our sins and ask for God's healing. Lord Jesus, he healed the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first, from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and is so saved. The scripture says, says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the throne, on the name of the Lord, will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they bear without hear, how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can someone, how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did. For their voice has gone forth to all the earth and there were the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them just. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The church is playing it safe and missing a wonderful opportunity, in my opinion. 
on this feast day of St. Andrew's of the different gospel passages that reference Andrew. The church has chosen to focus on this one that seems to be quite safe and benign. It simply tells us that Simon and Andrew are brothers, that they're fishermen, and both were called, along with James and John, to be disciples of Jesus. No one's going to argue those facts. In my opinion, a much richer choice would have been to use John's gospel that gives us his backstory, where Andrew is first a disciple of John the Baptist. Then he has an opportunity to tag along shadow Jesus for a day, and then is so convinced that he runs to find his brother Simon and tells him he believes that he's found the anointed one, the one that they've been waiting for. Who knows if any of this is true? It's only in John's gospel. But whether or not it's true or not, I think it should be true. It's something that we should focus on because it portrays something of the character of discipleship that is important for all of us, whether or not it's true of Andrew or not. So here's the key pieces. One is Andrew is a curious individual. Even though he's a fisherman, apparently he spends some of his spare time tagging along with John the Baptist, trying to learn more about what the possibilities are for this anointed one that they're waiting for. When given the opportunity to tag along with Jesus, we don't know that he sees any miracles or hears any specific teachings that are so powerful from Jesus. He simply tags along to see what Jesus' daily life is like. And oftentimes, we learn an awful lot about a person's character by seeing them and their day-to-day -day stuff as opposed to their external facades. And so I believe Andrew is wisely taking a critical eye to see Jesus and Jesus is perfectly comfortable. It's an invitation, come and see. And so Andrew sees enough to kind of convince him, and then he runs to his brother, indicating that these two brothers, probably spending many hours on the boat fishing together, shared many of their hopes and dreams about what the Messiah would be about. What kind of changes would they like to see in their lives? And ultimately, I think Andrew is a humble character, recognizing that he wants to bring Simon along on this journey and then introduces him directly to Jesus. Doesn't need to be a middleman. Doesn't want to be, Jesus said this today or Jesus said that today. Instead, just bring him directly to Jesus and get out of the way. Andrew does not need to be a middleman, showing a certain sense of humility. All these are characteristics that are necessary for our discipleship. We have to be truly curious about many things and willing to spend some spare time in pursuit of the truth and understanding God. We often have to see things and form our own minds. We can pay attention to others, teachings of the church, get opinions, but ultimately our faith is our own discernment process. It's up to us to make up our minds. And then when it comes to being called to be disciples, we have to be courageous enough to look like a fool, perhaps, to reach out to other people, try to help them, introduce them to Christ, but then get the heck out of the way. Because odds are we're going to botch the job if we're trying to remain in the mix, in between, a link between the two. And we have to be humble enough to let God relate to the people as God wants to relate to them not as we would see it. I have no idea if anything in John's gospel is correct about the character of Andrew, but on his feast day, I think it's certainly something that we would want to celebrate, and perhaps more importantly, emulate in our lives as disciples. Seeking to answer the Lord's call in our lives, let us offer him our prayers. For the church, as we celebrate the feast of St. Andrew, May the Holy Spirit lead all Christians to unity and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God strengthen them in their work of upholding the dignity and sanctity of all life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffer from depression or anxiety, may Christ's love 
and compassion be their consolation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For guests and visitors to our community during this Advent season, may Christ pour out his blessings upon them during their time with us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Anne Pish, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have died, may the risen Christ welcome them to the fullness of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the example of St. Andrew, we ask you to hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sac accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of his holy church. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you were praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that, encouraged by so great a cloud, wit cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. <clears throat> May communion in your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so that by the example of the blessed apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.
Thanks be to God.